Hello everyone, my name's James from the YouTube channel Plumber Parts and today I'm working with Plumwell to tell you all about electric showers. So if you're replacing an old electric shower or you're thinking about doing a new installation, hopefully this video is going to give you an idea as to what types there are out there, some of the installation requirements you need to think about and also the pros and cons of the different type of electric shower that there are out on the market and on the Plumwell website. So watch all of this video all the way through hit the like, subscribe to this channel, hit the bell and comment below what kind of electric shower you think you're going to get. Let's get on with the video guys. Here we go. Right, we're going to divide this video up into a few different sections so you can easily find out certain things about electric showers and what they're all about. So the first section is outlet types. Let's have a look. So we've got an array of beautiful showers here with lots of different outlet types. And I'm trying to test my camera woman at the moment by going up and down these beautiful showers. I think you'd agree she's doing a great job. One thing you'd have noticed though is we've got here single outlet. That's one hose here. Single outlet, yeah? This is a single outlet. This is single outlet. This is single outlet. This is single outlet. Now you come to a very new, I think this is a really, really nice shower. This is the Myra Azora. This is dual outlet. We've got a single outlet coming from the bottom of the electric shower. That's where the water is heated and sent through. But we divert that water supply through this little bit here to either the handset that we've got here, and these are these are what I always call handsets. Anything that's got off that flexible hose that you can use to rinse your hair out or whatever when you don't want a full shower or you want the shower to hit you in the chest, that's what I'd call a handset. And then right up there, miles away, you've got that lovely rain effect drench beast that you can divert up there. So what I'm trying to say is you can get dual outlet electric showers that look really really swanky like this but also you can get your traditional single outlet handset one like this here they're all on the market and all on the website as well so colors and finishes the decor that you could have i don't need to point out too much so we can get white we've got this triton here this as2000 sr power shower i'll be talking to you about power showers in a minute that's why obviously this triton here as well this is a pumped shower as you can see that's white as well but I you know, what I'm trying to say is, look, we're now going to things we've got this sort of nice chromium effect on here that's white, but you can now. And this is kind of moving into the sort of modern age, I guess. Not saying that these aren't modern. These showers still do an amazing job. But I think a lot of manufacturers now are looking into making electric showers look a little bit more cool. So we've got this sort of brushed satin, this silvery effect here from Bristan. This is a Bristan Joy. And another thing they've done actually quite cool with the Bristan Joy here is there's actually a little screen behind this that you can only see when the shower turns on and that will tell you the current temperature coming out of the handset so that's a nice little thing that the Bristan Joy has done there. The Myra Azora this one here this shower is the first type that I've seen and I'm a fully qualified plumber I've plumbed for years and years and years I fitted hundreds maybe even thousands of electric showers and I don't think I've ever actually seen one that's got a brushed sandblasted kind of thick pane of glass on the front of it. So what I'm trying to say is there are lots of decals out there. Most of them are going to suit your needs for whatever kind of design or installation that you're doing in your bathroom or if you're changing over your old shower, your old electric shower, you'll be able to find something that fits the decor of the one you were removing and replacing with one of these here or by looking on the website as well. So what about controlling the temperature of your electric shower? Every one of these showers here has a thermostatic control on them. Some of them have a different way of presenting to you on the front of them what that is actually doing. So for instance, on this one here, we've got one to 10, one being the coolest and 10 being the hottest. And and that's denoted by going from blue cool round to red hot. <laughs> red hot? That's where the saying comes from. It's from the electric shower fraternity. This one here, it's just it's not really got anything. You know, we've just got that on there and that's it. We come round here, we've got cold and hot. So you turn it that way, it goes cold. You turn it this way, it goes hot. Yeah, I think you're getting the idea now. There are other ways that manufacturers will tell you what is currently going on with the outlet temperature to the handset or the overhead head. The overhead head. <laughs> like I said, the Bristan Joy has a little screen up on here that will tell you. Also, the Myra Azora has one on here. There are quite a few manufacturers doing this now. So if you do want the added benefit of knowing easily how to turn up and down the temperature on your shower, but also knowing what is actually going on with the outlet temperature so you can get it just right for you personally, 
internally, you can now do that with some electric shower manufacturers. Another thing that you want to think about as well is you can get eco settings with these. So for instance, we go all the way back down here, come with me. So this one here, we're, we're cold there, there. We want to turn it to get hotter. So if you want to get hotter, we'll just press that button in and that will allow us to get hotter. If I go back, that button will pop out and then that will stop us going past that again. So we've kind of got an eco setting for that. With a lot of other showers, rather than having this, they'll also actually adjust the amount of flow that's coming out and that will be the eco setting. So for instance, on this one here, we've got power. Power one, two or three. One being a kind of trickle, the other being a nice powerful shower. And that is the same with the Aqualiza Quartz Electric 8.5. And I'll be telling you about the 8.5 number and what that means in a few minutes time. Um, that one doesn't really have that on there but the more you twist that to cold the more the pressure of the water will be when that comes out and that tends to be what happens with all electric showers and I'll tell you why in a few minutes time when we talk about the 8.5 but look we've got just frost here so that's not even using any electricity on that setting on the Bristan Joy if you turn it to Eco 1 it will start to be nice and warm and if you're insane and built of asbestos just like my wife who loves ridiculously hot showers you can turn that up to 2 turn that all the way up and you will be very uneco. but believe me if you were to be eco you turn that to the middle probably pop that to there and then you'll be in a fairly eco setting so there is the option of eco settings as well along with having closely controlled thermostatic mixed hot and cold water or just mixed cold water being turned to hot coming out of the outlet i think that makes sense Right, this might be one of the more complicated parts of this video, but it's really worth you understanding this so you don't make any silly mistakes or mistakes you didn't need to make when it comes to choosing either a new shower or the replacement shower. So to get us started, we've got three showers here, and these are gonna be the ones I use to explain to you what the kilowatt rating means when it comes to choosing either a replacement shower or installing a new one. So we've got the Aqualiza 8.5 here, 8.5 kilowatts. We've got the Bristan Joy here that is 9.5 kilowatts. And then we've got this Myra Sport here that is 10.8 kilowatts. Firstly, let's just talk about cabling for these. So I would recommend if you've got a shower that is an 8.5 kilowatt shower and it has gone wrong then guess what you should replace that with the same kilowatt rating 8.5 kilowatts if you put a 10.8 kilowatt shower in place of an 8.5 kilowatt one the cabling is likely not to be large enough to be able to deal with that extra load and you might have issues with trips hot cables and we all know where that leads. And you have to get a qualified electrician to come in and do it for you. And it needs to be signed off by a qualified electrician anyway. When it comes to this being 8.5, that being 9.5, and that being 10.8, we've now discussed, discussed the cabling. Always refer to the instruction manual, the instruction guide, or to the local rules and regulations of your local area to know exactly what size cabling you need for the shower kilowatt rating that you're installing. This is important. You don't want to get this wrong. It could result in either a shower that doesn't work properly that you've spent money on, or it could result in damage to your property. It's really, really important. So much so I'm getting a bit croaky. But let's talk about what these actual ratings mean when it comes to using the shower. You've now installed this 8.5 here. What you're finding is this, right? If we had this fully over to hot, we're diverting a lot of water over the heating element, which has got an 8.5 kilowatt heating element in there. And because we want this water to get up to temperature, we have to allow the water more time to pick up that less amount of kilowatt heat before it comes out of our shower head. What that means is the hotter you have that, the less flow is gonna come out of this, okay? If we started dragging that round to being mixed, the flow would start to increase. And if we went to cold, where we weren't diverting any water over the top of our element, it would pretty much come out of what your mains pressure in would be. If we jumped all the way over to this one here, this is 10.8 kilowatts. There's a lot more power in that element. Therefore, it doesn't have to spend so much time diverting water over that element to heat it up, which means if you've got that on really hot, more flow is gonna come out of this, of this shower head here, and you're gonna get a stronger shower. It goes without saying, the bigger the number, the better the shower. That's kind of how it is. But of course, the higher the kilowatt rating, usually more expensive the shower. But like I said, you need to think about the installation requirements of these first. So if you do have an 8.5 and you want to upgrade it to a 10.8 because you want that stronger, powerful shower, guess what? Get on the phone to your electrician, get them to come and have a look at the wire you've already got for your 8.5 and get them to advise you on how much it would cost to upgrade the cabling so you could have a higher kilowatt rated shower. So what is a power shower? 
God, I've got a headache. Right, a power shower. Some people get mixed up between uh, what a power shower is and a pumped shower is. So let's talk about that now. So this is a power shower here. This is the Triton AS2000SR. And if we looked underneath here, you would see that we've got two inlets coming into it. That is for a hot and cold inlet, gravity fed, not off mains pressure. And it will say on here, warning, this unit must never be connected to a mains water supply. What it is doing, it is taking a cold water feed and a hot water feed from your hot water tank that's gravity fed, that's feeding up into here. And then inside this, it's mixing it and also so it's got a little pump in there as well that will increase the pressure. So it increases the pressure and mixes the water to a thermostatically controlled mix. Also adjusts the flow all in one unit. Power showers are really, really popular with people who've got gravity systems and they want this whole thing to be all in one. So that's what a power shower does. Let's move on to pumped showers. And we've got one right here. This is the Triton T80SI pumped. Look at it again. It says, warning, this unit must never be connected to a mains water supply. So what do you think we're doing here? And if I look underneath here, I'll see that we've only got one inlet. So this is doing a little bit more. It's taking one cold water gravity feed and it is heating it up. It's allowing you to thermostatically mix it and also it's pumping it to increase the pressure so it comes out of your shower head nice and flowingly and beautifully all in one unit. So the difference is this one pumps and heats up water and gives out a thermostatically controlled lovely supply just from one cold gravity feed. But this one takes a hot and a cold water feed, mixes it and pumps it. It doesn't heat it up, which generally means that they also need less of a cable supply going to them because there's no elements in there like what you have in a kettle heating up that water for it to be used on your body. Right, so I would say now, pause the video, go back and watch a few bits again and make your kind of decision now as to what you think is going to work. Maybe make some notes, yeah? Have a look at your, your install at your home or whatever and just make sure you know roughly like, oh yeah, I've got an 8.5 kilowatt shower there that's gone wrong or that's what I want there. I don't want to spend extra money on cabling, blah, 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 blah. All these choices you might want to make. Now you know roughly what you want. Let's talk about the basics of installing one of these. The main thing you're going to notice is most showers have a cover that is held on by about four or five screws and to install one of these you are going to have to know how to take the cover off there's a couple in the bottom and a couple in the top right so we pop that off like that so the first thing I want you to look at is fixing points if you're doing a replacement sometimes you're going to find that you can use the old fixing points especially if it's a straight swap so we've got a fixing point down here there's a slotted fixing point up there and there's also a slotted fixing point up there. Usually what you'll find is you'll have two fixing points on a shower that are adjustable. So there's a slot there that allows you to get the shower nice and level. And then you've got a single hole one. It's usually the bottom one that is the one that kind of fixes it in place once you've got it nice and level and that's where you want it to be. Really the slightly complicating factor is if you're doing a replacement. So you've got an old shower with, and you've removed it and you've got holes in the wall that need filling up or making good. That that's when you need to start thinking about, oh, well, should I put this there or there so I can cover it over? But you've also got the thoughts about where the cold water supply comes in. So with fixing points, I'd say it's really knowing by looking at the instructions, the downloadable PDFs that you can get off the Plum World website to see where the fixing points are and if you're happy about it. You don't have to tie these into timbers or anything like that. Most of the time you can just plug and screw these and they'll be happy. Also read the instructions as well because some shower manufacturers do not want you to mastic round these. A lot of people mastic round them and they void the warranties. So make sure you read the instructions first, just like I would anything. Because being a man, I always read the instructions. Yeah? What you need to know is that there are generally three or four fixing points on every one of these. They're all in roughly different positions. Read the instructions first so you know what you're coming up against when you install one. Also, while we've got this beast here, why don't we talk about inlets for the cold water? These have all really improved quite a lot in the years that I've been a plumber. It used to be uh, you had to put compression fittings on in these. There was a lot of fiddling about getting the copper pipe to where you needed it to be, uh, and it was quite difficult. But now, they really have thought about different places where you can bring in the inlets. So for this one here, we've got an inlet that can come in from the bottom here. So that'd be a 15 mil pipe coming up just like that. If we have a look underneath here, you'll see there's these little blanking plates that can be added or removed according to where we're feeding our pipe from. Personally, I don't really like seeing any 15 mil pipe going up to an electric shower. That's just me. If I was installing this first time, I would make sure that my pipe is behind the wall and it is coming out being 
first fixed in the right position, ready for the shower to be second fixed once all the tiles are on. But say I was replacing this and the feed pipe for this came out on this side of the cavity. Well, I can actually just remove that sticker, unscrew this little fixing clip here and pop that off like so. Lift that up, swing that around, put that back down, pop the clip in there and re-screw it. But another thing I want you to look at as well is we don't always have to just be fed from the bottom like this. We can lift this up, swing this round, pop that back down. But then this piece here can actually swing upwards. The one thing I want you to take away from this video is to just look here at all these different shower makes, the multiple ways that you can install pipe work into these, but also the different points at which you can connect the electricity supply. They're all in different places, they all use different methods, but they are all versatile, flexible, and often changeable to your particular installation type. So as ever, make sure you read the instructions, understand the product before you even attempt to buy it, and make sure you get the right one first time by doing your research which is what you're doing now watching this video last thing and funny enough this is probably the one thing that you could change after you've installed an electric shower and that's the spray head options so you're gonna see here that they all have different options Triton are actually really good with their heads so you can move this around we've got five different options on here but also there's a button on the side here so if you do live in a hard water area and you do really want to quickly clean the shower head you can just whack that around to this here Hold that button in, push it a little bit further, and then the whole head comes off for you to clean it, which is really, really nice. Nice thing, I like it when companies think about doing stuff like that. And it's the same on their other model here for the pumped one. Aqualisa, they do a really nice shower head. I actually really love the shower heads they make. Really, really nice patterning. They've got lots of different settings as well. Nice, sleek movement between them as well. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, but they all do the same thing, where you've got this internal bit here selected, where it basically blows a hole in you. <laughs> it's just really, really powerful. I prefer to have like the most amount of holes going at once. That's my thing. So it's kind of less pressure, but it's more drenchy. That's what I like. I think we'll love a drenchy shower. But this is a very simple section for us and because everyone does, does these now. Most shower manufacturers, electric shower manufacturers, you're going to find that they all have these settings. It's just the amount of settings they have. So this one here has got three settings on the Bristan Joy. And then look, Amira Power Shower. Big head as well because it's, it's pushing out a lot more flow. And we've even got those really, really big holes there that really give you a good old battering when you're getting a, a shower. It just depends what you like, that's what I'd say. And of course, the dual outlet. This is the nicest shower I've seen, an electric shower I've seen. Absolute beast. So we've got this nice one here, but this doesn't have any settings on it. But who needs settings when you can just quickly change it over to your nice drenchy head up above to get yourself a lovely, lovely shower. Guys, I hope you've learned a little bit today about all the different types of electric shower you can get, the different finishes, the different decors, the different fixing points, the water supplies, importantly, the cabling. That's really, really important, but also the shower heads as well. If you think we've missed anything out, then by all means, comment below and we'll see if the Plum World Massive can help you out. If you see a shower here that you like, why don't you pop over to the Plum World website, links to that below, so you can buy it and install it. Let us know how the install went as well. Thanks ever so much for watching today everybody hit the like hit the subscribe hit the bell comment below and i'll see you in the next one world video oh goodbye